Good afternoon, everyone. This is Dr. Rostenberg again, uh, sharing with you some ideas today about how to treat methylation problems, but with a focus on blood sugar and digestion, because so often um, people are taking methylation support based off their own research, which I'm all for people doing their own research, but the um, the methylation support is given before the other metabolic issues are addressed and that's really a recipe for frustration or even lackluster results or even possibly results that make someone worse and so I want to share with you today how important blood sugar is how it affects our digestion and how it's going to relate to treating SNPs and what we need to all be aware of this slide is a great example of um, the symptoms that are common with low blood sugar, hypoglycemia, mood changes, trembling, paleness, sweating, dizziness, blurred vision, headaches, extreme tiredness, and hunger. These are very common symptoms in our clinic, and I'm sure everyone watching this has ever has felt these them, themselves or certainly knows someone who goes through this on a regular basis. And what the moral of the story is with blood sugar is that it's it's actually more dangerous for most people to have low blood sugar rather than high um, it's more common to have low blood sugar rather than high especially when you get into the natural health world people become very um, adverse to eating certain foods and I'm all for you know picking the right diet for you is critical but so often we remove all the food in our in our diet and there's not that much left to eat so we end up actually not eating enough so I just want you to become familiar with these symptoms and recognize that these symptoms are often um, you know, blamed on other things, but underlying those symptoms is just a blood sugar problem in most cases. So blood sugar is very ubiquitous. It's out there and it's kind of sneaky and it, we kind of get confused as to whether what we're, uh, you know, the disease we're looking at or the, or the health challenge, is it really a methylation issue purely or are there other metabolic issues going on as well? So when our um, blood sugar drops you know below 50 uh, we can have irritability we can have we can faint have seizures and even have a coma and so that's uh, that's a dangerous situation for your body because the brain depends on um, fuel in order to function and keep us alive so low blood sugar is a big deal now we're going to talk a little bit about what hypoglycemia really is um, what hypoglycemia is not it is not just a chronically low blood sugar. That's not a good definition of it. A better definition is blood sugar that goes way up and way down too often. And so this type of pattern where they have the valley and the peak over and over again, that's a very, uh, it's a roller coaster for the person who's experiencing that. When their blood sugar is high, the adrenals shut off. Um, they have high insulin. They may get tired, want to take a nap after a meal a couple hours later. Uh, they're shaking, their heart is racing, they're sweating, they can't focus. Well, that's because as the blood sugar goes up and back down, the adrenal glands are turning off and on. They're doing their best to um, support us, but that usually means dumping lots of adrenaline into our system. And as I've pointed out in previous videos, and as we'll talk about today, there are those of us out there with methylation problems that make us more susceptible to adrenaline and dopamine. We've, we're affected by it more. So we don't want to promote the excess release of these stress hormones it's going to wear our bodies out and give us uh, not make us feel very good what's really interesting about this uh, reference from 2013 is that they've figured out that low blood sugar is an injury to the central nervous system and it causes white matter damage and so just skipping a meal isn't uh, you know is not just a, it's not it's not it's not innocuous anymore it does actually hurt us and it causes uh, inflammation in the brain and it and it disrupts all kinds of systems detoxification gut gut um, you know um, protection digestion all sorts of systems are all affected when our blood sugar drops it also releases glutamate that activates this receptor the NMDA receptor in the brain and that causes brain fog so if you wanna you know give yourself brain fog just skip meals just be a chronic, just eat two meals a day, one in the morning, one at night, and live off the adrenaline that you uh, are, are releasing, and that will that will give you brain fog um, and all kinds of other issues. So we want to rule out the metabolic issue, the blood sugar issue first, before we go on and start 
um, being more specific with the methylation pathways. Um, blood sugar is a big deal to athletes as well, um, and this is illustrative for everyone because what happens is it's not it's not just the as I mentioned in, in the other slide it's not the average blood sugar level it's the rapid drop in blood sugar that is so toxic to our system. So as blood sugar drops as this ends in this chart the body responds with what's called the counter regulatory response. It, it increases um, cortisol, it increases adrenaline, it activates pathways involved in raising blood sugar. The pancreas is working hard, the liver's working hard, you know, we're wasting energy on this process. And so what this slide is all about is showing that the rapid drop in blood sugar causes a performance problem for all athletes. So maybe someone watching is into, you know, exercising or they enjoy uh, moving their body, um, they're an athlete. Um, you will increase your performance by balancing your blood sugar. And that's true for everyone who is an athlete or not. So um, you may have seen people who run a race, run a marathon, or you know, run track or play soccer, and they get sick like in the 20 minutes into their exercise or even at the gym. Uh, you know, Sometimes people get nauseous and they want to throw up, but they're working out so hard that their blood sugar has dropped too fast, and now they're suffering from the side effects of all the adrenaline that's released. So we don't want to make our adrenals work too hard, guys. They already are. Balancing your blood sugar is just a key, key thing in that, in that process. This is a reference that just illustrates how our body figures out when the blood uh, sugar is low. There's a neuro neurological receptor sitting in the um, carotid artery. And this is like a little sensor that's sampling the blood all, every second that we're alive. And it's telling the brain if our blood sugar is high or low. So making sure that we have good neurological function, good communication between your brain and, and the receptors and the rest of the body is actually a good step in helping our blood sugar get back on track as well. Um, we're going to talk momentarily now about how all this blood sugar problems, how these low blood sugar um, moments actually impair our ability to digest food. And this is really interesting. Um, so this is referenced out of the textbook of medical physiology. And this slide shows high blood pressure at 130, or blood sh sugar, excuse me, high blood sugar at 130, going down uh, to the left here to 50. And as the blood sugar level drops to our left, we notice this red line increase. And this red line is glucagon. That's a hormone uh, produced by the pancreas to increase our blood sugar when our blood sugar drops. And that's all fine and dandy. It's good. It's, you know, this is how our body compensates for low blood sugar. It does this to help us. But the side effect of glucagon is that the pancreas is working extra hard, making it more likely that we're going to have imbalanced blood sugar going forward. But there's another part of glucagon that we need to talk about. And that's this uh, reference from the same textbook of medical physiology that shows that when glucagon is increased, the secretion of stomach acid goes down. And those of you listening are aware of how important it is to make HCL in your stomach. And when we have low blood sugar, we just simply don't make enough HCL. This is why when we skip a meal, we're busy at work, we got something going on, whatever our, our situation is, let's say it's been seven hours since we've eaten, well, we've been living off adrenaline, we've been you know, releasing cortisol, we're eating our muscle tissue, we're you know, breaking ourselves down. It's, we've all done it. Um, but when we sit down to the next meal, ah, finally I've got some food in front of me, well, you can't eat very much. And the reason why is the hormones involved in raising your blood sugar when it was dropping so fast shut off your digestion. So when we're talking about methylation problems, you hear a lot about fixing your digestive system first, and I completely agree. Um, here you have the connection between your blood sugar and your digestive process, because if you don't make HCL, it's really hard to release the right pancreatic enzymes. The gallbladder stops releasing bile as much, so you stop using your glutathione pathway to remove toxins, and it just sets up a snowball effect that just disrupts our body. So low blood sugar is a really bad thing, you guys, and um, that's what I'm trying to communicate today. Now when you look at SNPs, um, here's an example of a, an individual with um, angiotensin converting enzyme, homozygous. This person won't break down um, the angiotensin 
uh, enzyme uh, molecule very much, and they also have high, uh, you know, SNPs in the glutamate decarboxylase. So this individual is more predisposed to feeling the negative side effects of stress. They're going to have more a tendency to have glutamate side effects, neurotoxic side effects. But when their body does stress out, they're going to feel the effects stronger than someone else because um, they're unable to break down one of the molecules that's released in the stress response, and that is angiotensin. So they can break it down. I should say it's just going to happen slower than it should. Then when you throw on top of that the MAO enzyme and the other uh, SNPs like COMT, you realize that low blood sugar in someone who has a lot of methylation imbalance just makes the problem worse. Depression is caused by stress hormones. Catecholamines, when you release adrenaline, it's going to make you feel depressed. And the research says just as much. Um, depression is not the only symptom that will come from this, but in a lot of people, this is what wears us out. Uh, we end up with low serotonin, and that's another side effect of not eating. Okay, Not eating frequently means you will have low serotonin levels, um, but your body will still manage to keep dopamine and adrenaline up. Uh, relative to serotonin. So that's a recipe for depression. And they looked at congestive heart disease patients and clinically depressed patients. Both both patients had depression and they had they had high levels of catecholamines in the blood. They had heart rate very their hearts were pounding, they had arrhythmia, um, and they would overreact to stressors. So you know we've all been there before but balancing your blood sugar really does help your adrenals calm down and gives them a chance to rest. So when you're treating methylation issues, like shown on this page, um, it really does make a difference if your blood sugar is stable or not. Because without stable blood sugar, you know, folate and B12 just aren't going to save the day for you guys. You've got to get deeper into the uh, big picture of the body and make those things stabilize. So here's another overview of the symptoms. Um, just try to think about these over the next few days and recognize uh, these symptoms in people yourself. And, um, you know, refer back to this video if you have any questions. Um, this will be posted on my blog as well, but I just want to kind of uh, educate that a lot of these common symptoms, having problems with your vision and looking pale and trembling and headaches and dizziness and just chronically tired, have a very lot, very uh, strong connection to blood sugar. And blood sugar, whether we have methylation issues or not, is something we've got to get under control. So thank you again for listening. Thanks for your time and attention. And if you have any questions, as always, please reach out and stay tuned for the next video.